Here we go. All right, Homestead homies, here we go. This is a great uh, thing for you guys to get under your belt, for you to know and understand. Uh, if you're starting your homestead or if you have one already, you might have fences that might need maintenance or stretching to tighten them up. Um, also, just putting in your new fences so you can get your goats and your sheep and your horses and everything else. So I showed you guys in the last video right here that's kind of connected to this video on how to make a um, fence stretcher. So make sure you watch that video as well and then we're, I'll get to the other end here and I'll show you uh, the stretcher one more time because I added two more bolts. I was short a couple bolts uh, so I have those in and those weren't lag bolts. Those are called carriage bolts. All right, so thanks a lot for some of the corrections. You know, I'm not the world's most terminology kind of guy when it comes to this construction stuff, but I have enough um, wherewithal and enough gumption to get it done. I learned quick and I'm on it. So those are carriage bolts. So what we're gonna do right now is we're starting at this end. And also, you guys noticing all these sneak peeks you guys are getting of the uh, garden area? <laughs> so we're gonna get this end secured and then I'm going to get the fence stretched and then I'm gonna show you something like if you're doing a corner post type stretch and I'm gonna explain to you why when we get to the other end, why I'm doing it this way. And I'm also gonna give you guys a couple tips. So as you guys can see, I've got the fence laid out all the way down the way so I guess the first tip I can give you is make sure that when you set your roll down to roll it out that you have it facing um, basically the right direction you want to be able to just roll it right out this way um, or the way that you're going if you have it flipped the other way it's going to be you know you can't muscle it out you know you just want to be able to just smooth it right out so hopefully that made sense to you I should have showed it to you but I already did it so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up this end of the chicken wire now this this uh, method or way to stretch your fence is gonna work with any kind of fence that you use um, even if it's uh, welded wire woven wire whatever so let me get you straightened up here all right and then I'm using my uh, steeples again <laughs> my staples and you can get those at any farm uh, supply store and then I'm just going to start fastening this fence on here to my post and you want to make sure you want to make sure that that's kind of tight um, be careful though because especially with chicken wire if you put too if you give it too much you'll actually snap the chicken wire so I'm just going to kind of work my way down this side here and um, we're getting her ready for stretching. Okay, now we're down here at the other end. I'm going to show you guys how to hook up the stretcher and then uh, what we're going to be doing uh, to pull it up. So here we go. It's, uh, it's actually getting dark outside and there's been rain rolling through um, the day today. A little on, a little off, a little on, a little off. So I have my boards uh, taken apart, right? I'm going to show you how that goes in a second. And then on the end here, I like to pull it down and then I like to kind of double it up just at the end, you know, just like two inches worth of overlap. So you're not just pulling on the one strand of chicken wire. So it just helps give it a little, a little added strength, right? Then what I do is I put it, put it, um, thread these carriage bolts actually through the fence so not only is it sandwiched in between there but it's also going to be relying on the bolts for strength and like i said we're just two plying this all the way down get that on there get that on there get that on there and you also want to try to make sure you're staying kind of straight um, with your board as far as lining up with the end of the fence here. Then you just take your board here, put it on top. And now I'm going to take my washer and my nuts. And then just uh, put all my washers on and 
then start tightening down my carriage bolts. I think we better go in for a second and see how it goes. It's gonna get pretty wet here in a second. So I got rained out last night. I'm back at it this morning. So what I'm gonna be doing now is just cutting a little hole up front. I usually like to run my uh, chain right about in the middle. I'm just gonna cut a little hole up front here because when you stretch your fence, this is actually, this part of all this right here is gonna be extra anyways once you get the stretch on. So you can afford to um, cut a little hole right here to feed your wire through or your chain through, that's what I do. So I'll just make a little hole right there and then I'll feed my chain through here. One more time. And then I'll hook this up to my come along. All right, and then I'll show you guys how that all goes together. What I did here was just laid one of my uh, spare pieces of my cattle panel on there. It was just to uh, help keep it from rolling back up because I'm a uh, one man show. So we'll get this hooked up to the come along. I'll show you how it hooks up. And then what I'm using here is the back of the tractor. This is a box blade that's on the back of the tractor. I don't really like to use the um, bucket and try to pull the fence tight with the bucket and the, and the chain because you can actually overstretch or pull too tight your fence, especially the chicken wire or even a bob wire, and you can actually bust it. So then you'll be missing out on material and everything else. So what I'm using here is a winch. And I'll just start cranking this up here. And it's nice to use the winch because you can feel how tight the fence is getting with your hands. And then you can, uh, you know, make sure you're not to over tighten it. All right, so my fence is nice and tight. Banjo string tight. You don't want to make it too tight. You don't cause any problems. And then when you run your staples in on each one of these posts, you want to make sure you're not driving them too deep to cut the uh, chicken wire, okay? And I don't know if you're going to actually use this kind of process, but there might become a time when you actually use the chicken wire on your property. And so at least I'm kind of showing you how you use a homemade fence stretcher and uh, the chicken wire and the staples uh, to make a nice secure fence. So let's go down here to the end here and we'll start stapling up each one of these posts. And what'll happen is that'll retain the tension on the wire on the fence. And then when I release this, it'll be able to uh, stay taut and then I'll wrap it around this post and finish it off here. And then we'll start our next run uh, going towards the log home. On this and secure my uh, fence onto my pole three or four steeples on each uh, on each post all the way down to the end will allow me to uh, go ahead and release it and keep all the tension in the in the line and then at the end of this video I'm going to show you something at the end of this video, I'll show you something that maybe you know, but maybe you might not know. So it's a good tip, especially for you beginners out there. Okay, got my fence secure here. Now I can release the um, come along and then that'll release the tension in the chicken wire 
and then I'll go along and cut right along here, wrap it around there, secure it, and then that run will be finished. And then I'll put my baseboards up, and then you guys will have to stay tuned for the big reveal. So I'm going to do this real quick, and then I'm going to give you our tip of the uh, day, uh, especially for you new homesteaders. Thanks for watching the video. I basically have just walked you through the first step on how to make a fence stretcher, how to um, put the fence in the fence stretcher, and then how to stretch it using a come along. So the hot tip for this video is, especially for you new homesteaders or people that aren't used to working with logging chains or you know heavy chains, is here's your link, okay? When you go to latch on your hook, you go around the whole link, see that? and then you apply your pressure. You never hook, you never hook your hook through the center of the link, because then that could um, actually create um, you know, a weak spot, because then you're only pulling on half of the actual link, okay? So there's your hot tip. Thanks a lot for watching the video. If you guys like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you share our videos too, get the word out. Uh, this is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And um, I guess we'll see you guys on the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a homestead homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will, will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.